Welcome back to The Look and Sound of Leadership, an ongoing series of executive coaching tips designed to help you be perceived in the workplace the way you want to be perceived. I'm Tom Henschel, your executive coach, and today we're talking about video feedback and executive presence. Annalena wanted my help, and she was very specific about her ask. A longtime listener of my podcast, Annalena wanted me to review some tapes of her presenting, then meet and share my notes with her. On the phone, she told me, I have more and more opportunities to speak. I need to get better. The good news, well, good for you, maybe not so good for me, is that everything we do here gets taped. Our people are all over the globe, so all our staff presentations are taped. There's lots of me you can see. I asked, you said watching yourself on tape isn't good news for you? Why is that? Oh, you know, she said, nobody likes watching themselves on tape. But you'll watch with me, I asked. If I have to, she said. Well, I'm afraid so, I said. And maybe, just maybe I can get you to not hate watching yourself on video quite so much. (laughs) Don't count on that, she said. After our call, her IT group sent me videos of her presenting. Annalena was pleasant to watch. I noticed two things she might improve. I felt she could lift her eyes up off the page more while speaking, and I felt she could end her sentences more firmly. But in general, Annalena's presentation skills were fine. In person, I found Annalena to be hardworking and to the point, brief and targeted. We didn't chat much, but we got lots done. It was mentally exciting. During our first hour together... I showed her several things that I thought she was doing particularly well. I also pointed out to her her tendency to talk with her eyes down. She saw it, she marked it on a pad, and I had the feeling she was rarely going to do it again. Seeing how convincing the video had been, I couldn't resist revisiting our prior conversation. I said, you said you don't like to watch yourself on tape. I don't, she said, but look what just happened, Annalena. You saw yourself talking with your eyes down on tape, and you knew immediately there's a better choice. How could that have possibly happened without video? Well, I suppose, she said. Well, I know for sure, I said. I've done it both ways. Really, Annalena, without playback, I would still be describing it to you, and you'd be wondering if I was right. That made her laugh. Yeah, I can imagine that's true, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. I protested, look how efficient you are. You would never waste a resource this valuable. Why not be grateful for it instead of being uncomfortable with it? She said, because really looking at ourselves is uncomfortable, isn't it? I smiled and said, it certainly can be. She asked, what's behind that remark? My own experience being uncomfortable when I saw myself on screen. When I transitioned from being a theater actor to a television actor, I had to start watching myself, and it was weird. Weird how, she asked. I'd been acting since I was about ten. You know, I'd always wondered, what do our plays look like from the audience? What do I look like from the audience? And then it started happening. I could turn on my television and watch myself work. It was weird. She said, I hear a lot of actors hate watching themselves on film. Mostly actors who are fairly far along in their careers, I think. And I understand that. You know, acting is intuitive. Like great athletes are intuitive. You don't want to get too self-conscious about what you're doing. Overthinking can kill it. She said, but athletes use video review. Right, I agreed. And at that stage in my career, I wanted to use it too. Look, if you want to improve your skills, video review is the best tool there is. She picked up her phone, and it's easy enough to be on video these days. (laughs) Too true, I said. I went on and asked, you know what video helped me with? What, she said. It helped me distinguish what I could change from what I couldn't. You know, watching myself, I had to accept that certain things about myself weren't going to change my nose, my face, the slope of my shoulders. I couldn't do anything about those, so I might as well accept them. But... Oh, my. Almost everything else, certainly all my behavior, that was changeable. It was empowering. She said, I'm thinking of one of my direct reports, Sarah. 
I think she'd benefit from video review, but I worry that she'd just beat herself up. She's critical of herself enough as it is. I suggested, ask her to build a list while she watches. Ask her to write down at least two things she likes about herself and two things she'd like to change, but make sure she finds two things she likes. Annalena smiled. You did that with me here today. You started with things you thought were going well. Absolutely, I said. Starting with what's going well is important because people expect video review to be painful. I see it all the time. I do a lot of video feedback with groups, and in the morning they come in, they see the video set up, and I can tell to them that looks like a drill in a dentist's office where they just ran out of Novocaine. But by the end of the day, they're all going, oh my gosh, this was so helpful, thank you so much. She said, well, that can't all be about starting with what's going well. No, that's true. That's one part of it. Another part of it is I teach them to watch themselves in the third person. If I were working with that direct report of yours, Sarah, I would get her to talk about that woman on the screen, not I'm doing this or I'm doing that, but she is doing this and she is doing that. And Alina looked away considering I haven't been doing that. When I'm watching myself, I'm trying to remember what I was feeling in the moment. I think that's pretty natural, I said, but it keeps you connected to the image on the screen. This idea of thinking about yourself in the third person, it can help you get disconnected so you can be a little more objective about what you see. I'll try that, she said, turning back towards the screen. Then she turned back to me saying, and what do I do about the fact that I hate hearing my voice? Oh, I said, <laughs> can I give you my spiel about that? Go ahead. I put my palm up and gestured toward her, saying, Your voice is the only voice on the entire planet that you experience inside your body. You feel your voice vibrate inside your chest and inside the cavities in your head. You hear your voice inside your body. It's not like your voice comes out through your mouth and zips around and comes in through your ears. She laughed. I never thought of that. So... Then, when you hear your voice played back as external stimulus only, with all the sensations removed, there's nothing recognizable about it. It sounds completely foreign. So we say, oh, we hate it, but it's really that we don't recognize it. She said, that's another version of accepting what you can't change. I suppose, I said, it might not sound right to me while I'm listening to myself, but it is what everybody else is hearing. She considered a moment and then said, It's more separation. How do you mean, I asked. Well, accepting your voice on playback is like watching yourself in the third person. It's what you said, getting some distance, seeing it as just another tool like a feedback report or something. Annalena had me work with her direct report, Sarah. Sarah learned to use video feedback to develop her executive presence, as did Annalena. Getting past their initial resistance to seeing and hearing themselves on tape allowed them to make much faster progress towards the look and sound of leadership. Okay, so I am going to throw down a challenge and I am going to extend an invitation. Let me extend the invitation first. If you're a coach... Stay tuned after the final sign-off of this episode. There are two things I want to tell you if you're a coach. That's the invitation. Here's the challenge. If you want the look and sound of leadership for yourself, if you want executive presence for yourself, I am going to give you a challenge in the form of an exercise that I know you can do. In fact, I just gave this exact exercise to a leader I was doing video review with. She was loving the whole process, and she said to me, how do I keep working on this? And this is the exercise I gave her. I'm going to give it to you, too. I asked her, hey, how much time do you spend on the phone in your office? And she said she spends a fair amount of time on her phone. I then pointed to her cell phone there on the table, and I said, record yourself. Record your side of the phone call. And listen on your way home. Do it every day for two weeks. And be sure to find two things you like. Every day. Two weeks. That was it. That's the exercise. 
If you are willing to do this, I think it is like putting a secret weapon behind your superpowers. This can really change you, and it's not hard to do. By the way, be thoughtful about what you record. You do not have permission to record everywhere. Don't assume that you do. But you certainly can record your end of a phone call. Do it. Use the recorded feedback. Okay, that is idea number one out of three. We've got two to go, but first, gratitude. You know, every month I am happy to read people's Apple ID when they've posted a review in iTunes. I feel completely comfortable doing that because they've announced themselves in the public forum. So I'm comfortable naming them. But there are so many others of you, and I hear from you in emails. I don't thank you by name because I don't feel I have that permission, but I want you to know I am so grateful for the conversations we have. Thank you so much for being in touch. And then we have our Apple Podcast posters. Thanks go out this month too from the UK, David London, and here in the US, OG Chatty Kathy and Coach.pick. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Really, thank you so much. Now, I want to tell you about something I have done. I have created a checklist for you, and it was fun to do. But, <laughs> you know, here's just some history. I have always avoided creating checklists to use with video review. I think by their very nature, they have to be a bat when what you really want is a scalpel. So I have to confess, I have had a bit of an attitude about checklists. So I've gotten over it because when I finished writing this episode, I thought the episode by itself just wasn't enough. It was like telling you about your secret weapon, but not unlocking the silo and showing you how it works. Now, I just want to be clear, this checklist is not a piece of magic. It's, you know, a couple of guardrails in one little section of a really long road. But the ideas in it are good. So grab the PDF. It will always live connected to this episode in the archive. Or you can always just shoot me an email and I will send it to you. But I have put this PDF on the Essential Communications homepage in the section called Essential News. I'm going to leave it there until November 2019. So depending on when you're listening, jump on over to the homepage, scroll down a little, you'll see Essential News, grab the PDF. That's the fastest way to do it. The website is, the Essential Communications website is essentialcom.com. It's essentialcom with two M's, dot com. Scroll down, click yours. Okay, now, the third and final idea. Video review is incredibly powerful. Do not work alone. Now, if you can work with a professional, with someone like me, that's fantastic. It's a gift, really. Take that gift. But most people don't have it. So, yes, use video feedback. And if it's helpful, use that checklist from the website. And then check it all out with someone you trust. Now, look, that person's feedback is not going to be the gospel, but neither should yours be. Get a reality check. If you'd really like to hear what that person has to say, it can be really helpful if you would talk about, quote, that person on the screen and not me. If you can give your taped self lots of distance, it might improve the quality of their feedback. Does this excite you? I, I hope it does. Video feedback is so powerful, can make a huge difference. I hope it makes a difference for you. If you want to follow the path down this rabbit hole, this tip is in the Coaching Tips archive in four different categories. Executive presence, feedback, presentation skills, and perception, how you perceive yourself. If you want to jump to particular episodes, Five you might listen to are Captivate Your Audience, Executive Presenting, I Talk Too Fast, Performing Like a TED Talker, and The Power of Rehearsal. Okay, that's it for me this month. Until next time, I'm Tom Henschel. Thanks so much for listening. Okay. Hi again. Hi, all you coaches. This is great. Never done this before. I'm loving this. Okay, so two quick things. First, I got to tell you a story. Um, I was talking with two coaches who I really respect and like. They are friends. And 
they were talking about the podcast, and they talked at one point about how much they learned about coaching from listening to the podcast, and I was horrified. I was like, oh no, please don't. Look, I'm writing these coaching tips to tell a story, and I've created this character named Tom Henschel, who's an executive coach, but things come out of that guy's mouth during these coaching tips that I would probably never actually say in an actual conversation with a client. I mean, here's just one really good example. Most clients never even know I was an actor. It never comes up because we're not there to talk about me. But in these tips, you know, this version of me that I'm writing, oh my gosh, that guy is doing a lot of telling, a lot of storytelling, a lot of example telling, a lot of telling, and not always so much coaching. So please listen with kindness. Here's the second thing. I would like to extend an invitation to you. I host a special interest group about executive coaching. It is one of the many, many services offered by the Los Angeles chapter of ICF. If you have any interest in executive coaching or corporate coaching, come join us. It's a fantastic community. There there are coaches like me who've been coaching for decades, and there are people there who haven't even begun their coach training yet. So it's this wonderful, diverse group of people, friendly and welcoming, and none of us show up as experts. We all show up as learners. It's really fun. We do it online. We get into small breakout rooms. We have fantastic discussions. Come join us. So you can find the Executive Coaching Special Interest Group on the icfla.org website, icfla.org. Special interest groups, you'll see lots of special interest groups there. For example, there's one about building your business. It's led by a woman named Gretchen Heido. She's terrific. It's just one of many. So take a look around, but come join us for the executive coaching group. Now, this episode is going live on Thursday, September 5th here in the United States. I don't know when you're going to listen to it, but on Friday, September 13th, we are going to have our executive coaching special interest group meeting. So get online, sign up, and uh, full disclosure, if you're not a chapter member, it's going to cost you 10 bucks. But if you're a member, it's free. There's lots there for members, by the way. Okay, I would love to see you there. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay, y'all. Bye-bye.